I'm going to uh, present to you some work that I do with a colleague uh, of mine, Adrian Hawker, who's uh, a colleague at Edinburgh. It's about, um, well, a kind of a practice, occasional practice we have uh, called, called METIS. Um, and I'm going to structure this through a uh, presentation of a, a retrospective exhibition that we had, first of all, in Denmark and then in some other places um, some years ago. So I'm going, to talk about, I'm going to talk about seven projects, but I'm also going to talk about the exhibition itself as a kind of a project. And so um, I'll try, and try to say some things about questions of exhibiting architecture uh, as well and the attitude we took toward the retrospective, making a retrospective exhibition. Um, so can people hear me okay, actually? It's, I, I'm having, yeah, is it okay? Is it coming across clearly? Okay, so I don't know if people know the architect school in, in Aarhus in, uh, um, in Denmark. This is the, uh, they have this uh, sort of nice exhibition space which they use. It's quite a big school and they use it for, uh, for various events and for end of year shows and things like this and um, the visiting exhibitions. So you can see two, um, two slides uh, of it from the first time I visited. The one, the one on your left is um, obviously a you know, lower level view, which uh, shows, it shows it's a top lit space. Um, it's, quite a, it's quite a big space, and then it has this balcony that runs around the top, which you see from above. So we were invited by the curator, Karen Kiergaard, to uh, make an exhibition uh, of, uh, of our work over previous years in this, in this space. And so, so one of the first questions, I think, was how, um, how we could you know, engage the volume uh, of the space and work with the, work with the scale. Uh, and this was a very early um, sort of uh, drawing, I suppose, that was made uh, based on one of these slides. So the thought at this point was to um, establish some kind of drawing or mapping uh, on the floor of the seven projects that we would show. And then uh, at this stage, we were thinking almost of a series of vitrines that drawings and models of the project would be shown in. So almost making a raft um, within, the, um, within the space. And this gradually developed into the idea almost of, uh, instead of having a vitrine, uh, of having a, um, a display table um, in which uh, a number of drawings would be shown. We had three sheets of drawings for each project and a single model. And, and this was one of those sort of serendipitous things that, comes, that come out of things that you find. And it happened that the, um, uh, the gallery had uh, some very large glass toughened sheets um, that we could sandwich drawings between. And this, this eventually led to the idea of a kind of, um, uh, a kind of exhibition which, uh, in which everything would be shown on a horizontal surface. There would be nothing that would be vertically mounted. Um, and then it would be about, uh, it would also, we were also interested in the idea of an exhibition that really didn't have a middle scale, that uh, things were very large or very small within it, so you're either very close looking at things with the larger field in your peripheral vision, or else you were sort of standing back looking at these um, smaller objects within this larger um, uh, raft. Uh, and I suppose that came out of um, the reflections on how to, you know, kind of, you know, work within this, um, within this, the particular conditions of the, of the gallery. So this was the drawing then that we, or the representation, the, the file that we made for the, uh, uh, for the production of the, of the drawing on the floor, uh, which, which turned out to be made by a Danish textile company that had this amazing sort of printing process. Uh, so what's happening here is that there are fragments of the seven projects, which I'll, uh, projects that I'll, you know, I'll tell you a little bit more about. Um, and that they come to interact with one another in, um, let's say, in a way that they hadn't before. I mean, we, we felt that uh, the exhibition should be uh, an opportunity to almost kind of resituate and resequence the projects in relationship to one another. Uh, so they're different sort of differentials of scales that occur within this. So the, 
a piece of clay, for example, that's on the upper part of the image is actually quite a small fragment of clay from an installation that we made, but it becomes expanded to be a kind of island that's, um, you know, that people can walk on and that uh, floats within the space. Uh, but I'll talk more about this shortly. So these were um, sort of tests that the, that the company provided. Um, I'm going to be going through the slides quite quickly just to try to give you an overview of the work and, and the ideas within it. Um, this is a view which shows the way the, the gallery works. So you see it has a kind of large auditorium in the centre. You enter from the bottom and then you sort of walk through into the, um, into the, into the space behind where you then uh, step, onto the, step onto the drawing. So we actually had to think away of a way also of bringing people through to the back. So the exhibition text, the descriptive text, was set up as a kind of thread that, le that led people through. So you come in from the left-hand side and you follow the line of text reading it, and then it takes you around, around the corner to the, um, uh, to the drawings. And then this was the way in which the seven, um, seven tables were, 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 were positioned. Uh, and although the, um, although the, um, the kind of organisation of the representations on the floor is quite mobile and uh, is working with different kinds of projection and relating to one another in, um, you know, in, in, in a complex way, the tables were thought almost as, uh, they're, they're very orthogonal, they work almost as um, you know, anchor positions within this. Okay, so the first project I'm going to take you to is a project for, uh, uh, these are all sort of competition projects or in installation projects. The first, the first is for the um, sort of Great Egyptian Museum uh, competition, which ran, oh, I don't know how many years ago now, probably maybe tw 10, 12 years ago. Uh, this, was, um, this was a project for a site near the Giza Plateau, and it was the, um, the brief was, you know, to make a, to make a, um, uh, a major museum project, which would be the, which would basically collect together all the, um, uh, all the Egyptological artifacts uh, and allow them to be held in a position close to the, close to the pyramids. So we were interested, I mean, and I suppose one of the things that we do, uh, so I should say we're, I mean, we're interested in architectural representation, we're interested in the productivities that of architectural representation and ways that one can discover, let's say, possibilities or opportunities within um, uh, particular conditions, representational conditions, which are not necessarily intentionally there, but which open on to a kind of speculative ways of working with the um, with the with the images. So with this, uh, we were rather interested in this 19th century trig trigonometrical survey of the, of the pyramids uh, and the way it draws a kind of geometric, based on the, on the crystalline forms of the pyramids, it builds a three-dimensional uh, geometrical net around this. And, and I suppose the initial idea was that, um, you know, what if we took the object at which this uh, net was targeted, not as being the pyramids, but rather as being something much more transient and ephemeral, such as the, the play of shadows on the, as it was conveyed through the competition documents in the pyramids itself and around the, uh, around the plateau. So we began to study this. So this is the, the competition side, the top left-hand side. It's a relationship with the pyramids below. This is the, um, this is the Flinders Petri um, trigonometrical net. Um, the definition of the shadows, uh, and then the process was then to um, actually make, we made this net, net as a physical three-dimensional form, which we then physically manipulated uh, through a series of folds along the trigonometrical lines, and basically uh, um, uh, conveyed it, transported it back to the competition site. Uh, through a series of folds in which the shadows were folded into themselves. So this is a series of moves that um, uh, that, uh, that, that was uh, developed from. So you have this then kind of compacted, sedimented uh, virtual topography of, of shadows and trigonometrical lines that then become um, 
located at the edge of the competition side. So, so within this then there were five um, sort of vessels or objects which we developed which are more figurative and which are orientated toward the pyramids. And the five of these come from the basic five divisions of the competition brief, which were to do with um, the basic um, sort of classificatory uh, definitions of the museum collection. So there was one on you know, the land, there was one on religion and priests, etc. There was one on, on the kings, the, the pharaohs. Um, so the drawing here on the, on the left-hand side is the, is the web of lines, and on the right-hand side, the arrangement of shadows that uh, are caught within, within those lines. And then these are the five, um, uh, the five, the five vessels, the five, the five objects, which sit above uh, the, um, the stratigraphy, the kind of sedimented, um, uh, almost you know, kind of semi-quasi-geologic condition of the shadows and, and, li and lines below. So the idea with this is they're, they're almost sort of thought to be uh, eroded, sculpted objects, and that passing between them, you would have these sort of deep views toward the, um, toward the pyramids. So you would enter through the lower topography below, and then you would rise up into these vessels, and you can sort of move through them, but then you can also cut across them. And as you move across, you get these deep canyon-like uh, uh, canyon canyon-like views. And these were some of the, um, just the sort of competition sheets actually talking about the arrangement of the uh, temporary exhibition space and storage, which is held below the, uh, the uh, held in the layers below. And then the uh, sort of a partial model on the right-hand side, um, studying one part of the way that these forms um, begin to twist and uh, um, orientate themselves in the landscape. Uh, so what connects them together, what pins them together are these pathways uh, which, are, which are in red. Um, I have a pointer somewhere that... Um, is this the pointer? Yeah, so these, these pathways here. Um, so these were, these were mapped through descriptions that we had of um, key connections that existed across classifications in the collection because you can imagine you know what one of these uh, one of these vessels might be about might be about the pharaohs another might be about the priests and and religion but there are obviously artifacts that connect those two together um, so what we did was we used the description of that to uh, establish the set of um, of pathways or routes which become a kind of physical structure which allows um, bridges to be made between the um, uh, between these pieces and as you move across you then get these sort of deep views down toward the pyramids so this is actually a very small um, very small cardboard model that we made to, to explore this I mean probably probably about that size um, and it's something I mean I suppose just as a general point we enjoy working very much through models um, and it always seems to, to me to be quite crucial, the kind of um, you know, scale or size of the model that you use at particular times. If, if one tries to make something too big, first of all, you're always sort of fighting against the thinness of the material and the, um, you, get a, you get a kind of, you know, sort of doll's, doll's house kind of effect. So we actually quite like working with very, very small models to begin with and, uh, and gradually um, uh, you know, gradually working through various, um, I suppose, discovering things on those, and then working through different, uh, different, different materials and different, um, different scales of model to, to explore in more detail particular questions as they arise. So this was then uh, just talking about the, the different classifications: the land of Egypt, king, kingship and state, man, society and work, and looking at the way in which the um, the roots work in relationship to that. And this is just a little uh, sort of um, indication of the way that these roots work almost as pins, which cut across and hold these together. And then for the exhibition, uh, we, we, we remade the, uh, the larger scale sort of partial model. And um, we made a decision. I mean, these, these were the... the um, 
when we were first thinking about working on this exhibition, we imagined, uh, not the exhibition, the, the, the competition, we imagined the vessels almost as elements that had been weathered out of a single piece of, of material, like a kind of uh, a rock that through the movement of sand and wind had been um, you know, er eroded in a particular way. And so for the exhibition, it was important that the feeling of um, the kind of sort of monolithic quality of these was, was important. So we, we made these from a single piece of, of wood uh, so that the grain is always running the same way uh, in the model. And then the, uh, the shadow lines and cartographic lines were cut onto the, uh, onto the face of these. And then this is the folded, the folded plate below. And then the, the solid pieces were routed from below and um, elements inserted into that. It was quite challenging sort of laser cutting these because obviously laser cutters are set up just to work on a single plane only. And uh, so uh, ourselves and Richard, uh, Richard's probably been here, hasn't he? So you might have met Richard Collins before. Richard, who worked with us on this, it was quite a complex series of sort of jigs and I see rather sort of frightening um, experiences with hands and the laser cutter that um, uh, allowed this to to happen and then it turned into this quite highly sort of baked uh, sort of model at the end where the, you feel the, the laser cutter becomes the kind of environmental er erosion um, that, uh, uh, that, so these are very, very interiorized um, kind of spaces that open up at certain points to reveal the um, uh, spaces within and then this is the folded topography below. So this is all about Sometimes this is open and it's sort of, there were sort of sheltered cafe areas and garden areas. Uh, there's quite a lot of curves under the shadow of the vessels above, but you also, uh, one of the vessels um, slides down underneath the, the top plate. So you can kind of rise up out of this into the vessel and then you, you know, and then you move across. Okay, this is, uh, this is a project called Cabinet of the City, which was a, um, competition project for a municipal um, gallery of art near Porta Pia uh, in, the north of, in the north of Rome. Uh, so here's, here's Porta Pia up here. This is the old Peroni Brewery site, which is the site of the competition. And uh, it was focused on a courtyard behind two uh, stable blocks, which were actually the, well, these were originally the blocks. I, actually, I think the stables were around the outside. This was the area in which the, um, you know, the horses that took the, that carried the, pulled the carts that uh, used to carry the, you know, the, the produce around the city were, were best. And this, this uh, the initial part of this was uh, worked through a kind of scaling um, procedure where we established an axis through the city uh, based on the orientation of this um, almost sort of galleria-like space which I suppose with the office buildings actually, and the stables at the back. So this is projecting this way across the city. And then this field is set up through, uh, it's defined by the dimensional, the dimensional relations between the length and width of this space then define this field within the city. And we were really working between the disparate representations of the Nolly Plan, Piranesi's famous engraving of the Nolly Plan, and a contemporary aerial photo map of, of Rome. So we were trying to graft these into one another and almost um, uh, think of them as um, of producing sort of hybrid representation where, where, in which we were reading these together. Uh, so the Nolly Plan is famous, of course, because it shows the interior of the religious and uh, many of the public buildings of Rome. So it, shows us a, it gives us a kind of vision of a of sort of hollow city that we um, often don't have through a kind of urban map. And our idea was that these almost uh, begin to work almost at the scale of furniture pieces inside the, inside the so this is the, this is the site here. So this is looking then at um, a process in which the, the notion was that the architecture would uh, develop through almost treating the city as a thick volume which could be drawn out into the uh, courtyard space and then operate almost like the opening of a kind of cabinet, uh, like the, 
I don't know, like kind of performance, I suppose, or uh, a series of hinging um, uh, operations, which then built connections with the existing um, buildings around the edge of the courtyard. And this is really just a stage sequence of representations to show how that played out. So first of all, hinging around the river, and then uh, around the, uh, the sort of Vatican area here, the folding down of this piece and the kind of the gradual, the gradual opening out. So we made this um, model to explore this. And then this is the um, sort of isolation of a series of elements from the Nolly plan in relationship to that process with the hinging and movement lines and also uh, from the photo plan. Uh, and then this is a, this is a, um, a, uh, a sort of layered, layered drawing, I suppose, reading the elements from the photo plan and the, no the Nolly plan together uh, and the, the whole sequencing of operations almost as a kind of uh, layered depth, depth condition. Um, and eventually sort of skipping, skipping forward a little bit, this was, the, uh, this was the, one, of the, one of the planned studies then that, that, that came out of that. So the, the land, this is the, um, this is the sort of undercroft of the Galleria space between the two buildings. Uh, the land drops down from the front to the side, so there's a fall from, uh, from this area here along side street down there. So though you come in below, what happens is you, uh, you come in over this sort of bridged, or actually, you, well, you don't, you don't enter from that side. It forms a, it forms a kind of underground um, uh, gallery here, but uh, it links in with this um, sort of performance event space. It was part of the brief. Um, this is a bridge that passes over the top of that and gives access underneath an existing building um, onto the street at the side. So it becomes quite complex in terms of the way the, the different levels work. This is a, a triple height uh, exhibition and gallery space and there were supposed to be artist accommodation for, uh, for people who would come and work here. And these take the form of a series of, of higher level um, little sort of studio spaces that sit above the, the gallery space below here and sort of light, light comes down. Between those, this is the this is this study of the art space above the courtyard, and the uh, spaces around. Uh, and then there were uh, some studies of elements which are ref which were referring back to pieces that had come from the mapped elements. So this is a library um, space that connects into a small a small reading room um, that that fits you know that fits against this protected book storage space. This is the, li this is the librarian's uh, office here and that, that bridge that crosses over the top of the performance space uh, is held uh, by this um, sort of structural piece that passes up from below and then passes out the other side. So these are the sections. This is, the, uh, this is a section through that curved book storage space that you just saw and the way that it works with the reading room. This is the event space below. Uh, this here below is that, uh, is that bridge that crosses over the top. The artist studio is above. Uh, this is the curved um, facade of, the, uh, of the, uh, the book storage space, which sits up above the courtyard. So you can actually, you, you know, you can walk underneath this. And the, the set of scratches that are made on the topographic surface become, become glass uh, or uh, um, spaces that you can see down and let light down below. This is, this is the area below the gallery uh, and the, the inner facade of, the, uh, of, that, of that gallery space. Um, and then this is the, the model that we made for the, I think this is in my view probably the least successful of the models that we made for the exhibition, but we wanted to, uh, make almost a, uh, get across the sort of fractured series of, 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 of pieces um, that derive from the, as I say, from that sort of mapped procedure. So this was a, uh, yeah, I think this model doesn't have, doesn't have the material richness of some of the other models, but, but anyway. Um, so it's partly a plan representation and it's partly a, a view of the, um, uh, of the way that the elements extend up and uh, and 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 work within the space. 
Okay, this is um, the third third project I'm showing you is um, uh, a project for uh, um, a gallery outside Seoul in, in, in Korea for the American Korean performance artist Nam Joon Pak. Uh, this is a, this is a sort of early model that we made of this. This is in a very hilly area, and the idea was that the building works as a kind of um, uh, warping and compression of the topography of the landscape itself. So it's almost as if uh, a certain translation of the landscape is sitting inside the uh, is sitting inside the, um, the the larger landscape of hills and undulations. And there are quite a lot of uh, routeways and walkways around the hills here. And the the idea was that the building um, you know connects with that and becomes part of the uh, part of the the way of moving across the landscape. So we were interested. What led to this was um, the some of uh, uh, some of Pack's early work, where he was working with um, sort of television um, tubes, early television tubes, and placing strong electromagnets uh, across the electron um, stream, so that you know you know to produce the kind of um, anamorphic image, which a, a warped. Uh, image. This is a, I think this is called Electronic Opera. He did a very famous performance of, uh, uh, of a television address by Richard Nixon, in which he sort of performed with this, um, with this very powerful electromagnet and um, uh, sort of warped the image in relationship to the, to the, you know, to the words. So this is the way we sort of read this as a kind of process. Uh, I mean, this led to the idea of almost sort of treating the the contour drawing of the landscape as a kind of, uh, as a sort of field, as equivalent to an, an electromagnetic field. And um, the way that the television worked was through a, sort of series, a series of scan lines. Uh, so the, the field is organized through an equivalent series of, um, of vertical lines, which actually act as scan lines, and then through a process the contours below are red as interfering with this, and then this produced this uh, process of compression into the uh, into the site. So basically, we read the we went through this process where we read the the, the relationship of the angle between the the vertical lines and the uh, the contour field as uh, producing a series of deformations that were related to the angle across which they passed. So this is almost the rescreening then of the entire uh, distorted field into the site to produce a series of um, effectively kind of warped lines. This is a taxonomy of the of the uh, of the warping of the lines. Uh, and then a reading of that inside the uh, inside the site. This is a this is a section of sort of along the where where am I? Yeah, section about. Yeah, yeah, about about here, cross section across that way. So there was a there was a kind of bus drop off point here, and then the way that you um, you kind of you kind of move in here. These are the, these are what the plans look like. Um, so there is a, this is the this is the entry level here where you um, you kind of come in from the side. You're underneath the building hanging above, but you're still outside at this point, and then. Um, you kind of move in through here. You can kind of pass down below into a large, larger exhibition space. This is uh, archival storage here. This is a uh, uh, in the basement. This is a uh, sort of public lecture hall and, ver and office spaces behind. And then this sort of winds up through a through a series of ramps, which are also used for displays, which are double back in themselves in different ways and sort of move out. Uh, well, they sort of move back into the landscape, but then turn around and. And move up, and the building. I mean, it's almost like a braided river. I suppose it it, it thins out as you get toward the top. Uh, I think this is the various. Uh, I think this is the yeah the top the top level, uh, which then and then at one point there's a bridge across to the landscape there. But these are all. You know, it's kind of constantly ramping circular system, and it wraps around some larger. Um, Vertical spaces as well, which, pa which pass through the building. So this is one here, um, and these. The, so this is this is just a series of, of images of the initial cardboard model that we made within the landscape, and the, uh, the sequence of plates 
um, and the way, I mean, it's quite hard to make a model of because, um, well, they're not really plates. They're constantly um, uh, sort of dropping and connecting with, um, with each other. And this was the, this was the model that was then made uh, of this for the, for the exhibition. And the way that it's, uh, I mean, it was really important to get across the way that it was embedded within the landscape, but um, it was made with etched um, perspex uh, floors, so one could, it doesn't come across very clearly in the model, uh, in, the, in the photographs rather, but it was important to try to uh, see into the model and to see the way in which the, um, you know, the connections moved, moved around. And then there are these occasional more solid pieces, which are almost like um, rocks or erratics or something like that, that are held inside the streams. So this is the uh, sort of a wooden um, uh, auditorium, uh, sort of small lecture hall. Okay, this is a project that Sophia knows well because she she worked a little bit on it actually. Uh, this is so this is. Uh, this is a project for sort of bathhouse, spa hotel for a disused, um, in the area of a disused neoclassical spa, um, sort of bathhouse in Latvia, Leopagia, Latvia. It's very close to, to the coast, a large sort of beach area. This is quite a nice building uh, made by an um, uh, architect called Paul Berkeley, who worked at the, it's from about 1902. Um, this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's quite dilapidated. Um, it's not in great state. These are what the, um, I don't know, maybe some of you have flats that look a bit like this, but this is what the, uh, this is what the interior of the, I mean, people, 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 <coughs> people would pay to go here. This was the, uh, there was a little sort of bath here, and I guess they had these um, sort of bathing rooms which looked out the back toward the, toward the landscape. So again, as I say, we almost always like to work through models, um, partly because we, we talk a lot when we're working and uh, somehow when you're working three-dimensionally, it's, uh, you know, you can kind of add, uh, add things, uh, offer things, offer elements that you find, things that you sort of, t you, you sort of rip up bits of card you know, and, and sort of develop the project in that way. So, I mean, the, the fundamental idea here is that the, the, new pro, the new building works as a kind of garden wall for this uh, aquatic uh, garden landscape that exists within. This is the old building. It sets, uh, sets a kind of measurement, I suppose, the, the increment of the rooms sets, it sets a kind of scale. Uh, the idea was that the rooms at the back would, instead of having the little baths in them, that they would actually be made into single pools in their own right, and that there would be new furniture elements that were uh, like wardrobes that you passed through and then step, stepped into the pools, and then you could move out through the windows into, um, into these uh, sort of garden, garden strips behind, which are strips of different different materials. So you know that beautiful moment in, I don't know, Scarpus Quirini Stamp Stampaglia Library where there's an old bridge, but you enter, Scarpa makes a new bridge into the building and it's alongside the old stone bridge, but you enter into the building through the window. The new bridge actually takes you in through, in through what was a window before. And you feel you're in this rather sort of magical situation in which it's like a, you know, an angel or, a, or something magical passing through uh, uh, you know, passing in a different way into the building. And then from that point, you have a shifted relationship with it. You know that everything is going to be subtly, you know, subtly transformed in some way, or potentialities in things that are there are going to be you know, shown to you. Um, so I suppose that was in our mind a little bit. Uh, so, so there had to be an outdoor pool area. Uh, we wanted it to be responsive, not just to people who were staying here, but also to people who are, you know, going to the beach. Um, so, and, and, and using the area more generally. So this was a kind of car parking area, uh, which had to be there as part of the brief, which is part of the wall. You, if you're staying there, you go and you check in. Uh, there's a walkway underneath this at the back, which I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Uh, and then you sort of move up through these staircases, 
which um, it's a bit hard to describe, but you, you actually go through the building, but you're, you're constantly outside and you come up uh, in these folds and then you enter into the accommodation above in either way. And then there are these long ramps which sort of take you down into the landscape. This is a sort of theater above a pool and there's an outdoor pool here. It has showers along one side, so people going to the beach can use the shower. And then there's a kind of boardwalk underneath this with um, uh, sort of restaurants and things that people, pe you know, people, people can use. So it was partly about negotiating the, uh, the two worlds of the, uh, of the, uh, the interior garden and the, uh, the beach and the, the pine trees that lead to the beach behind. So, th so these are the strips of different materials and we had, we had this idea that there might be little, I mean the same way that, I don't know if you're familiar with them, but there used to be summer houses that people had in gardens which were placed on turntables so that summer houses could rotate. I mean they're very light, just made out of timber and they could, you know, maybe just little huts for one or two people and they could rotate to the sun. So we had the idea that there might be little outdoor baths that sat within the landscape, just like cast iron baths um, that might be recovered and could also rotate in a way. So this is, I'm not sure why I'm going back there, but this is, so the garden wall becomes a brick wall um, which, uh, in which the, the bricks become um, parted at certain points with no mortar in the vertical joints. So they develop these lantern-like um, conditions around the side and they also hold vertical circulation that uh, so each of the there are two apartments in each of these and they lead up to little baths which are on the roofs as well one which sort of looks down into the garden and one which looks across toward the horizon of the sea so it's like a continuous um, you know folded folded wall which wraps around and this is uh, these are some of the drawings with the with models of the of the interior spaces this is the way it builds up. Uh, the wall wraps around the, um, the kind of auditorium at the end and the pool. The, uh, the, the accommodation spaces below and then the way they sit on top of the, of the garden. So there's also, so, so, so these are now the sort of pool rooms which lead out. There's a, sort of a little conservatory space here. These are the baths and the landscape. And this is the way, so this is the ground floor now. So you see how this works. This is where you, uh, you come around here, you, you check in here. You're, you're on the outside all the time here, but you're underneath the building above. And then if you're, going, if you're going to your room, you walk along to the staircase. Or the, uh, you come up here, this sort of threads through the building. You come up to a point above this. There's a little landing above. So all these spaces below connect through, through the uh, landings that you arrive at at the top of the stairs. And then from the level above, you kind of go into the rooms. But at this level, these are sort of sitting rooms or different, uh, different parts of the spa hotel that are, that are publicly accessible as well, because this is all an external space. You can sort of walk all the way publicly along this side. Um, and then this is, uh, yeah, this is just what it looks like. We have the, uh, this is the way the rooms work. You come in the top. You go in that way. They work as sort of um, a little bit like, well, I suppose we were thinking, you know, you know the plan of Corbusier's, uh, the rooms in the Unité with the, uh, with the mezzanines at the back. And so you have a double height space above. So this works both, both ways inside that. And this is what the, um, the kind of wall looks like with the bath spaces on top. So these are glass uh, elements at the end of each of the rooms. And then there's uh, this perforated brick wall which runs around the side. This is what it sort of looks like along the, along the side. Uh, this is a model showing the way the, um, the way the spaces work. So this is sort of public down here. This is the public boardwalk. You go in, this is, I'm not sure if this is a waiting area or a, uh, I think this is a little library space actually, a little public library space. And then, but from the inside, you, uh, if you come into your room, you come around the corner, this is the double height space, and then there's stairs which lead up to the sleeping mezzanine. And then, of course, the bathroom and stuff is at the, uh, underneath the mezzanine at the back. Oops, sorry, that's that. Is that in a bit more detail? So you see here the, this was the model that was made for the exhibition then. Um, 
see the way the perforated screen works, the way it wraps around. Um, sorry, this is, uh, I think this is, I quite like this, uh, this computer model because it gives, it gives quite a good sense of the way the circulation, the different kinds of circulation work and the way the staircases going up to the room are held within the, uh, the thickness of the walls. Uh, this is a kind of slightly earlier timber model, which just tried to show the relationship of parts of the rooms to the um, to the uh, to the rooms in the in the bathhouse. And then this is the model, sort of sitting on the uh, in the in the exhibition space on top of the drawings. So this is the way all the models worked. We had three drawings, basically sandwiched between glass on top of the trestle tables, and then a single um, a single model sitting on each of these. So I'm going to start and move a bit faster and not really say too much, just to give you... Uh, this is a, an installation project that we were invited to make in the Lighthouse um, Architecture Gallery in Glasgow. This is called, called La Puta. It was based on uh, an episode from Jonathan Swift's um, Gulliver's Travels. Um, it's about clouds, material clouds, and... Um, fabric clouds, it's about wind and sails, about uh, the etymological relationship between clouds of clay and clouds in the air. These are just uh, yeah, photographs of the... It's about trying to make material things exchange properties, I suppose, and see different properties, see lightness and things that are very heavy, and see weight and things that are... Um, or light. So the whole thing was hung, was counterweighted inside the space of the, uh, of the gallery with these fishing weights, these lead fishing weights, to make a kind of thick, um, a thick space. And then the text of, uh, uh, of, the, uh, of Swift's uh, Swift story was um, placed on the wall, but not the whole text. Certain key words were picked out, which acted almost as, um, almost like um, kind of plimsoll lines, or in the way in which, uh, on the side of a boat, you know, you might find gradations related to, you know, two meters, two and a half meters, to how far the boat sinks. We, we, we wanted gradation lines like that, but more, but they were descriptive gradation lines, so hid the sun, shade of a mountain, cloud, exit. So these, these all gain a special relationship with one another on the wall through, the, um, through, the, through their dimensional relationship in, Smith, in uh, Swift's, Swift's text. So it was put in a flat in Edinburgh, actually, and sort of lived it blocked, completely blocked a flat in Edinburgh for, um, for about six weeks, actually. Uh, we had this opportunity to sort of place it in the living room. Uh, and quite a lot of people going into the flat didn't know that it was there, so it sort of uh, it was quite interesting there. Uh, so we just had a few remnants of the uh, of the installation. Uh, it's a project for Verona um, about things uh, about using a series of copying strategies from elements that are in the city, about uh, copying strategies that transform the things that are being copied. So a wrapping, so measuring and working with the uh, Renaissance wall of the city and kind of re-wrapping that as a kind of wall structure into the side, working with, uh, uh, it was a series of four different things that were selected to produce uh, a, a, um, a, it was a series of facilities that were related to uh, an annual exhibition uh, that is held in Verona, but it also is, it also was about providing new parkland as well, and I'll show you a more detailed model of this, which was um, parkland that was made on top of a series of old railway lines, and the railway lines provided a special structure for the park uh, through which these small pavilions, which we described as drift works, sort of drifted and uh, anchored. So I'll not. This was the, this is a sort of series of diagrams of the folding of the wall. Uh, this is about a series of excavated uh, spaces or buildings. These were the selection of um, elements from the existing railway lines and the way these little pavilion pieces drifted through and sort of began to block or act as gatehouses to smaller gardens. So they're acting as small music performance spaces, bookshops, things like this. Uh, 
This, was the, this is a more detailed model of that section which we showed in the exhibition to show, to show this um, sort of spatial structure of striated walls uh, and um, these little pavilion elements. It's a more detailed study of how they sort of work within the spaces. Okay, I'm not even going to try to talk about this one because it's, um, it's, uh, it's too much of a, a detailed story for the time. Other than to say that this was about a speculative drawing on top of a city plan, which made a s series of uh, sort of parallel linear cities, which are then folded together uh, in a physical way. I mean, these are my, these are, these are my hands here with this uh, uh, to, uh, to produce a new project for a site in Ottawa. Uh, Okay, so this is the exhibition, finishing off quickly. This was this line of text that leads you in. Uh, this is my colleague Adrian. Uh, actually, one of the things that happened was that our drawings got lost on the, on the plane. So whenever we were setting these up, we had, we had the trestles, we had the tables, we had the models, uh, but we didn't have the drawings at this point. So we, uh, we, 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 we began setting up, the, uh, setting up the exhibition in the hope that uh, they would appear, which they did in time. So you probably recognize uh, some of these from the projects I've showed you. This is the Nolly Plan with the Cabinet of the City. These are clay fragments from, from Laputa. This is uh, the Verona project at the site. Uh, but the way one started to find sort of strange relationships between, the, um, between these sort of little figures from Piranesi here and the, uh, the real figure of the, of the technician there. This is us beginning to set the models up. Uh, within the space. This is the, um, the image on the floor of the plan of uh, the Namjoon Pak Gallery with the model situated above. So this is taken, photographed directly down from the balcony above. So the exhibition gets kind of quite quiet in a way as you get low uh, and the, the, this plimsoll line sets, is related to the, uh, to the height of the tables. So as, you get, as your eye gets lower the exhibition almost disappears. You really just have the um, special relationship of the models. And then as you get higher, it becomes much more, um, much more complex. Uh, this is just reading the models in relationship to the space. And then as you get high, things start to um, sort of interact with one another in a more complex way. So it was a way, I suppose, of letting us sort of read drawings in relationship to the model, uh, read different kinds of representation, make them work upon one another. We were trying to avoid any sort of sense that there was any single I image or any single drawing which was identical with the project, but rather the project had to be constructed through these differential trajectories and relationships, text, three-dimensional construction, drawings, then one was always sort of working with, you know, you drop close to the table, you have to look closely, but then you have this larger field in your field of vision. The Lepaggio project. So these are just some uh, photographs from the opening of the exhibition. So this is the Verona, part of the Verona project, on the floor, on the table, in the, t in the drawing. Everybody in Denmark has such fantastic red hair, so it really works really well with the, uh, um, this is the, uh, the, um, the, the Egyptian Museum project you saw. And you find these sort of, you know, you find these, uh, I mean, I suppose we wanted to set up a kind of reading room in a way where people read through moving and through walking and through finding, exploring it perhaps with their cameras, with their eyes, with their feet, with their, f with their fingers, uh, and that one discovers, uh, I mean, in a way it doesn't matter. F what's, more, what's more interesting is rather than to say everything is intentional, we, you know, we wanted to make something that we could discover. I mean, this is, I suppose, what ultimately what's, at stake for me in questions of representation. And what's interesting when you represent something is that you never do it exactly as you think you're doing it. You begin with a kind of intention, 
but there's always a kind of difference. I really feel strongly that no matter how much of a sort of master of a media or an art we are, we always find something surprising uh, in what we do. And sometimes what's surprising is more important than what we find confirmed back to us through the process. So it's a kind of, um, yeah, so it's a reading space for us as much as it was a reading space for uh, uh, any, any visitor. Uh, these are all just obviously photographs from the, uh, from the opening. Uh, so this was, this was a, um, I'll not read this, but this was a, a review that Claudio Carbone, who's one of the um, teaching staff uh, at, uh, at, our, at our house wrote. And it's really just about um, sort of walking on the surface and the way in which the locations and conditions and periods of production of each of the project become dissolved through the motif of the surface and that they become sort of contemporary, contemporaneous with one another and uh, they rework one another through their co through their through through their co presence so she talks about it you know she describes it as an inverted ceiling which i think is quite nice you know you go to the sistine chapel or you go to a, one of the Tinteresque scuole in, in in venice and you're given a, a mirror to look down at and she likens it to you know to that to having this um sort of you know um, elaborated surface being being, uh, being projected down to below and then this is just about sort of looking in detail uh, and these are these are Adrian's shoes on the edge of the, on the edge of the carpet so okay th thanks that's good. That's good.